the Muslims who went to the Americas as slaves um, came from West Africa. And in the early period, they came mostly from Senegambia, that is the region of modern Senegal and Gambia, and where the Senegal and Gambia rivers uh, flow from the Fudijolon highlands uh, to the ocean. <clears throat> that whole region had been Muslim uh, since about 1000 AD, and it had been part of the uh, in, in the 16th century had been part of the Songhai Empire. Uh, by the 17th century, um, <clears throat> the Songhai Empire had collapsed and Muslim societies were divided uh, into much smaller states all across this region. And it was an area that had became involved in increasing warfare internal, internally. And in the course of that, uh, many Muslims were enslaved. Uh, in fact, in terms of Islamic law, <clears throat> freeborn Muslims should not have been enslaved. Uh, it was against the law, uh, but it happened anyway. And so this region really became a source of, uh, of a Muslim population uh, in the early period. And that's an early period that took uh, Africans to Brazil and took Africans to the Caribbean uh, in particular. And so in terms of Brazil, the population of Muslims was never really extremely large, but nonetheless there was a Muslim presence. In the context of Brazil, uh, it's usually thought that Muslims were largely confined to the 19th century. Uh, primarily because of the Muslim uprising in Bahia, the Mali uprising, uh, which is well known and which was very important historically. But what I'm talking about is an earlier period, and in fact there is virtually no connection between the Muslims from the earlier period and what happened in the 19th century. So it's important to understand that in Brazilian history uh, there was a Muslim presence <clears throat> well before the Malay uh, presence of the 19th century. And it's that dimension of uh, Brazilian history that I'm really trying to address. And the Muslims that came in the earlier period largely came, as I said, from the Senegambia region and the inland uh, Sudanic area, the area that was known as the Balad el Sudan, the land of the blacks. That's an Arabic term for that region uh, of West Africa that includes Savannah and Sahil. Uh, and the rivers, the, the Gambia, and the, and the Senegal, and then also inland, the, the Niger River. After the fall of, of Songhai in the 1590s, uh, the West Africa entered a period of, of, uh, of really fragmentation. Uh, and one of the results of that fragmentation was the establishment of, uh, or the consolidation of small states under warlords, under military commanders who were primarily living off of raiding and collecting booty and um, uh, basically not trying to consolidate larger states but just taking advantage of um, their own military position to advance their own, uh, their own cause, uh, which was basically to get as much money as they could and to control uh, small areas uh, where they had enslaved populations, farming, and, and so on. Uh, and in that context, uh, what emerged was a reform movement among Muslim uh, intellectuals, uh, teachers, scholars, uh, who were reacting against the, the, the chaotic conditions of the political landscape. And they started preaching um, a jihad, that is holy war. That what they wanted to do is they wanted to overthrow the existing governments because they were oppressing the people and um, they wanted to establish a the theocratic state which was based on the Sharia, that is Islamic law, and which uh, wanted to impose a much more orderly society and one that was based on Islam and based on a dedication to the religion, to morality, 
uh, to the to the to the precepts of um, of uh, Islam. The Muslim scholars and teachers uh, and clerics uh, really were speaking out against the political, uh, the state of the political uh, affairs and the, and the extent to which there were warlords that were just attacking the, the populace at will. And, and they started uh, preaching jihad. They started preaching the need for uh, a, a Muslim uprising, a holy war, uh, that would, in effect, overthrow the, the, what they consider to be the corrupt governments and to establish a government that was based on the Sharia, on Islamic law, and on the morality of Islam. Uh, and th their preachings uh, spread very widely, and uh, although for, a, for quite a while they didn't have any impact really on the existing um, uh, landscape, uh, but in the, 17, in, the, in the 1680s, under the leadership of Nasser al-Din, who was a Moorish, uh, from Mauritania, a Muslim cleric, um, they, they found uh, a leader who was willing to wage a war, wage the jihad, and he, he, he collected troops, he collected uh, people, followers, and he organized a raid into the Senegal Valley, and he overthrew a couple of the the Wolof states that were uh, that were particularly guilty of um, doing this raiding and enslaving and collecting of booty and behaving in that sort of fashion. And he wasn't successful in the end. Initially, he was, but then there was a reaction by the established military leaders, and they overthrew him. Uh, and so he was not successful, but nonetheless he provided the inspiration for a, a holy war uh, to create a, a theocra theocratic state on an Islamic model. So in the 1690s, uh, some of the followers of, followers of Nasser al-Din uh, started a, another jihad in the upper Senegal River Valley. Uh, quite close to where the source of gold was, uh, what was so important in the trade of West Africa at this time. And they created the small state of Fouta Bondu. Now, Fouta Bondu was small, but it was important in terms of an inspiration. It was, in it was important as an example for Muslims in West Africa that it was possible to overthrow the military dictatorships and establish a, the a theocratic state. So this is really the context of West Africa. Th that jihad movie expanded much more rapidly in the 18th century, and particularly expanded uh, in the first part of the 19th century. And so it encompassed all of West Africa by the 19th century. But it began in the Senegambia River at the end of the, the, of the 17th century. Uh, uh, and this really provides a context for the, the earliest Muslims who went to Brazil. The reference to a Moor in Palmares in 1694 is without any question a reference to a Muslim. Um, the term Moor uh, was a, a term used in, in Portuguese to refer to Muslims, and <clears throat> Moors in particular inhabited the re region north of the Senegal River, uh, and they were referred to Moor there as they are today, and hence the modern country Mauritania. But Moors uh, in north of the Senegal spoke Arabic, um, and the fact that this particular individual was referred to as a Moor very well uh, could mean that he was not just a Muslim, but that in fact he was one of the followers of um, Nasser al-Din, who himself was a Moor, um, both in the sense that he was a Muslim and that he was ethnically identified as a Moor. This, uh, the presence of Muslims, uh, whether they're called Moors or not, uh, in Brazil at this time is not unusual. Uh, they were a proportion of the population of the enslaved population in Brazil, so this is not unusual at all. 
And uh, there's no question that if he was referred to as a Moor, that he was from Africa and that he was a Muslim. So I think that's pretty clear, and it fits into the broader pattern of uh, uh, both uh, 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 Senegambian history as well as Brazilian history. The second issue is that the Moor who was at uh, Palmares uh, is credited with being the, the individual who directed uh, the construction of a wall uh, around um, uh, Palmares. Uh, it was a wall that had a, uh, that had a trench, and it was a wall that had uh, stakes uh, before the trench that were, uh, were pounded into the ground to, uh, that in effect uh, are excellent protection against horses. Um, and the wall w would have been made out of, um, of, of, of wood, of, uh, you know, cut trees and that were, that were, that, that were made into uh, a stockade. Um, this, uh, this actually replicates a pattern that was common in the Muslim areas of West Africa where all of the major uh, towns and uh, cities were, uh, were walled cities and uh, although the walls there were usually made out of earth uh, rather than out of, um, uh, out of trees and, 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 and lumber. Uh, but that that doesn't really make so much difference. The fact that here was a here was a Muslim from West Africa who was familiar with that type of fortification must have been a very useful um, uh, a factor in terms of Palmares developing its defensive system.